Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl, Makeup Deanna. If you have not, go ahead and make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of my content. This tutorial, I'll be showing you how I create my soft glam look. Make sure you watch my Get Ready With Me and how I created this outfit and what I did to get this look. You definitely want to check that out because I bought on a budget. And if you bought on a budget, then you know what it's like. So if you're ready to see how I created this soft glam look, keep on watching. start out by going in with the Georgette Klinger Marula Primer. This primer is very lightweight but it's also very hydrating. It's so important to make sure you prep your skin before you start applying your foundation and let me tell you why. It helps to prolong the wear of your foundation and it just gives you that smooth and flawless look that you're going for. As you already know by now, the NYX Total Control Pro Drop Foundation in Golden is my favorite foundation right now. And the Sephora Pro Slanted Buffing Brush is the brush I'm going to use to apply this foundation in this number 88. Using this foundation, I only need about two drops to give me the coverage I'm looking for. And it's so full coverage for me. I don't know if you like a lot more coverage than this, but I feel like this gets the job done. It's soft, lightweight, and it just blends out very smoothly. Some foundations are so heavy that I have to blend so much to kind of get it in a smooth consistency. But this foundation, when I say it goes on so milky and silky on my skin that I don't have to apply as much and I don't have to try to blend as hard as I would if I did a heavier foundation. If you know of any other foundation that I would like that has this same consistency, I kind of go for more of a drop type consistency versus something more heavier in coverage. Like the Huda Beauty is a lot heavier for me or the Kat Von D is super heavy for me. Like I love the brand, but I don't like how heavy the coverage is because it goes on so cakey to me. So if you know of any other foundation that is lightweight, but still gives that full coverage, drop that in the comments below. For a soft glam look, if you have not watched my everyday makeup tutorial, I did not put foundation on my nose. And so for the soft glam look, a soft glam look is a little bit heavier in coverage, especially on the eye area. That's the difference between an everyday look and a soft glam look. I think that sometimes that is so many looks out there that we get confused with what look is what and I get clients that ask me for everyday look but they're really wanting soft glam. Soft glam is a lot more eyeshadow on the eye. Um, it's a lot heavier on the eye but it's still soft. It doesn't have to be harsh and really bold makeup looks but it's definitely a lot more than the everyday makeup look. The F Camo Concealer 16 Hour Wear in the shade Deep Caramel is my favorite right now. It's a must have if you have oily skin. Listen, like the coverage is full. It's a matte finish on it and it just gets the job done. The reason I'm doing this technique is because I've seen it on um, Instagram. I've seen it on TikTok and I said, you know what? I'm gonna try out this technique. It's just one of the new hacks that they have been advertising and marketing as far as how you apply your concealer. So I'm trying it out and it's not bad. Like I feel like it actually accomplished what I wanted it to accomplish. And with that said, what I wanted to go back and say about this concealer is if you have dry skin, you might not like this concealer because it is very mattifying and it dries down super quick. It reminds me of the Too Faced Born This Way concealer because of the brush size, but it's also true to what the brand is. It's e.l.f. And so when you're applying it, make sure you hurry up and use a beauty blender and blend it out. Thank you. 
I am taking the time to show you how I'm squeezing my beauty blender because I want you to see how damp it is. When you have a damp beauty blender, it will squeeze like this. If you have a dry beauty blender, it will not squeeze like that. And the reason why you want a damp beauty blender is because it makes everything blend seamlessly. Do not skip this step. Do y'all see how smooth it's looking? Like how easy it's blending in to my foundation? Like that's what you want. And so using that damp beauty blender to blend out your concealer is what's gonna get you that win every time with a flawless face. And now I can tell you why I did the technique that I did on this tutorial. Um, because what that hack is supposed to do with the concealer um, placement that I did, is supposed to give you a lifted eye. And y'all can see how it's got my eyes looking lifted. And so this technique, okay, I give it a 10 out of 10, like it did what it was supposed to do. Had I had done my eyeshadow first, you would have you really seen the drastic change from the brightness of my under eye versus not doing this technique. So I like it. For the remainder of me blending out this concealer, I'm not going to over talk it. I'm just going to let you see me walk it. Like I'm going to just let you see me blend this out. So enjoy. I will be setting my under eye with the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Powder in Oak Translucent. This setting powder is probably my favorite right now because it reminds me of the Laura Marcier setting powder. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you now, I was not having a good setting powder day. Like, I think I skipped a step or something and it's just not going on like I wanted it to go on. So I'll, forgive me, like it's still gonna be blended. It's still gonna end up smooth, but that's not usually how I apply my setting powder. Like it's usually, a lot more consistent with it being all over my face in a, in the direction of you seeing where I placed my setting powder but this time around I think I was having a bad makeup day like I was just trying to get this content recorded for y'all and it was like my battery was running low and I was just trying to hurry up the speed so forgive me but yes I'm setting my under eye and I'm just gonna set my chin my forehead and my nose and when you do this step it will prolong the wear of your foundation and it will just set everything in place To set my foundation in place, I'm going to go in with the Kat Von D Lock It Foundation in Tan Deep number 185. And I'll be using the Sephora Pro Airbrush 
number 55 to apply this foundation powder. If you're new to my channel and you don't know why I set my face, I set my foundation no matter what. If I do a liquid, I'm going to set it with the powder. If I apply concealer, I'm going to set it with a setting powder. It's important to set your foundations because it helps prolong the wear of your foundation and it just gives you that flawless finish. If you do not set your face with foundation powder, you will have oiliness throughout the day. It'll slide, it'll crease, and that's not what we want. Unless you're going for a dewy look, then skip this step. But I recommend setting your face if you're going for a matte finish. To set my under eye, I'm gonna use the Sephora Matte Perfection Powder Foundation in number 36, Golden Fun. And I'm gonna use the Real Technique setting brush to apply this for my under eye setting powder. I want you to say this with me. Whenever I apply liquid foundation, I need to set my foundation. Whenever I apply concealer, I need to set my concealer. Never ever skip this if you're going for a matte finish. I cannot stress it enough. Oiliness on the face is a no-no. We want a matte finish, we want everything set, and we want everything flawless, okay? <laughs> I'm going to go in with the Black Radiance True Complexion Contour Palette in the shade Light to Medium. And this contour palette is a favorite for me. I'm gonna use that middle shade called Sculpt. And I'm just going to bronze up my cheeks. The brush I'm going to use is the Loopsy 514 Blush Brush. So I don't really want a contour look. I want more of a bronzed blush look. So I'm using that brush to just warm up the cheeks and I'm sucking my lips in just to show you that no matter how professional you are, if you want to know where to place your bronzer, suck those cheeks in. And I go a little bit above. As you can see, I suck my cheeks in and you can kind of see the contours of my natural contour. And I go a little bit above that to place my bronzer. I'm gonna put you on game with face shapes. There's so many types of face shapes and I'm gonna tell you now, I have an oval face shape, which is considered in terms of the makeup industry, that is called the perfected or perfect face. Um, a lot of celebrities have an oval shaped face and I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures on the screen so you can kind of see what an oval shaped face looks like. If you have an oval shaped face, contouring is easy to do. Um, if you have a square shaped face, it's a little bit harder because you have to know where to place your contour. And that's another tutorial within itself. But I do want to tell you that if you have an oval shaped face like me, if you apply your contour in the same places that I do, then you'll be on point. Okay. Cause like when you have an oval shaped face, your contour, you can pretty much put it wherever you want it because every dimension of your face is already proportioned. And I wish I can show you like what that looks like, but like I'm saying, like the contour is different for every face shape. And so I know my face shape, so I know where to place my contour. I'm gonna use the Anastasia blending brush to apply my contour on my nose. And I'm gonna use the same palette that I used to apply the bronzer on my nose. And so when I'm stamping my contour, I start at the brow line and I just work my way in to the sides of my nose. It all depends on what you want your nose to look like. And I like mine to look kind of long and kind of slim. So that's the reason why I do my nose in this step. With my nose shape, you can tell like I really don't have 
a lot of dimension on the bridge of my nose, like on the sides of my nose. So I'm kind of creating that definition to give me that structured nose contour, if that makes any sense. So all you really see on my nose right now is the bottom, like the ball of my nose, but I want to add some structure to the sides of my nose. And that's why I do this step to make it look more narrow and long. Taking the Hulu bronzer by Benefit, I'm going to use this as a transition shade for my contour. It's a little bit lighter than the contour I just used, just to kind of fade it into the rest of my nose. And I'm using that Anastasia brush on the other side to apply this part. Um, so like I said, as a transition shade, I want my contour to fade into a softer shade so I don't have any harsh lines. And so that's what this color is going to do. It's going to act as a transition from the darker contour into a lighter contour to give me a flawless contour finish. Y'all, come on, let's take a moment to celebrate the structure. Like, y'all see what contour does. I just structured the heck out of my nose. So now I'm taking that setting powder that I used previously and I'm just going to set my concealer once again, just because we're just about ready to start applying the eyeshadow. And we don't want any fallout from the eyeshadow onto the foundation. And this also just gives you more structure on the face to show a contrast between the contour and the highlights of the face. And that's another reason why I go in with another layer of setting powder to actually show the transition from the contour versus the highlight. And come on, let's just be honest, a matte face is a flawless face. Come on, we done with the oiliness, we want a matte finish. Before I apply my eyeshadow, I'm going in with the Ace Beauty Eyeshadow Amplifying Base in Medium to apply a primer to my lids. I usually do not use a primer, but I'm gonna use one today. And the brush I'm using to apply this primer is the BH Cosmetics Concealer Brush in number 130. And I'm only applying what a pea size amount to my brush. I'm only gonna use a little bit for both lids. Like it don't take a lot, but you do wanna make sure it's on there. By now, in the year of 2022, we should already know to start applying primers and concealers on our lids before we apply eyeshadow. It just helps your shadows go on better and it just gives you a lot more consistency as far as color payoff goes. So if you don't use a concealer or a primer, stop this tutorial right now and click on Ulta, Amazon, or Sephora and go put that in your shopping cart right now.
The palette I'm using for this look is called the Violet Voss Olive You Forever. This palette is going to give me the colors I need. And I'm going straight in with that first shade charm. I'm going to put this right above the lid and I'm going to use the Real Techniques shading brush to apply this color. I'm really applying this like right on top of the crease and you don't have to do this in a perfected way like this tutorial. For this eyeshadow look, it does not have to be perfect, but you do want to have a little bit of structure when you're doing this step. So I'm just taking that brush and I'm just kind of smoking it out in a winged direction as the outer part of my eye, as you can see, is in a winged shape because I want to give my eyes a lifted look and it's just what I was feeling at the time. I am so sorry y'all for the remainder of the eyeshadow look. It's going to be a little blurry. I'm not sure why my camera got out of focus, but I can definitely see how going back and looking at it is like blurry as I don't know what. So I'm sorry about that. I did not want to cut this part out because I wanted y'all to see the steps it took me to get my eyeshadow look. But again, forgive me for the blurriness. For my next eyeshadow color, I'll be using Endless Desire for another transition shade. And the brush I'm going to be using is the BH Cosmetics Precision Brush number 132. And I'm going to just place this color right above the shade I used previously. And this shade is like a warmer orangey undertone and it's going to act as a way of blending the colors together. And also I was watching the tutorial, I cannot remember her name, but I saw her do this eyeshadow look and it inspired me to try this look as well. So this is another look that I got from another YouTuber. I wish I can remember her name, but I really cannot. But anyway, I'm applying this right above the eyeshadow I applied previously and I'm going to blend the two out. I'll be using the Anastasia blending brush to further blend out the two shades and then I'll be going straight in with the wink shade from the eyeshadow palette and I'm going to use this shade and I'm going to press it on the entire lid area and the brush I'm using to apply this the BH Cosmetic shader brush. I'm going to go back in with charm and I'm just going to warm up the eye area and just kind of like deepen my contour along my cut crease and the outer part of my eye area. To bring structure back to the nose, I'm going to go in with that same contour palette and I'm just going to press that shade in onto the top corners of my nose. And this just gives it more of a defined look and it gives me that pop. I'm also going to go in with that last shade, Infinity, and I'm going to use this as my wing liner. And the brush I'm using to apply this color is the BH Cosmetics Smoky Eye Brush number three. I will say this was new for me because I usually do not do a wing liner, but I took my time and I stamped that color on my lid. And y'all, I was so pleased with the turnout of how my wing came out because I usually struggle with a wing liner, but it. I'm proud of this, y'all. Like, I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back. <laughs> I'm 
One thing I learned about applying wing liner is to make a triangle shape. So you can see that I'm starting at the corner of my eyelid on that eye line. And I just kind of twist my head to the side so I can kind of see the shape I'm wanting to create. And you kind of just want to create a triangle shape if that makes any sense. And you just kind of want to angle it up in the shape of your eye. going to use a peeled adhesive liquid eyeliner to finish winging out this eye look. Um, this is an adhesive but I did use it as a wing liner as well. Um, I'm not really sure if the glue is as sticky as it says it is but yeah that's what it's supposed to be. But I'm just going to deepen up this wing eyeliner anyway with a liquid eyeliner to just make the emphasis on the eye pop. And that's what a soft glam does. Like there is a huge difference between the everyday makeup look and a soft glam because there's a lot of emphasis on the eye. Like there should be a pop on the eye when you're doing a soft glam look. And now I'm just taking that same smudger brush and I'm just going to blend the shadow and the eyeliner together just to smooth out the finish. Using the Good Vibes Mascara from Tresta Q, this mascara is life. I love the consistency of this mascara and it does give me a lot of volume. Doing this step is vital because you want to make sure you apply mascara before applying your false lashes just to add emphasis on the eye so that everything can be blended and you don't see a strip line versus your actual lash line. I cannot remember the name of these lashes but they are extra large lashes. They are mink lashes and I love a good long lash and I'm going to take the duo lash glue and I'm just going to put these on my lashes using my hand. Some use tweezers but I can use my hand to apply these. And I just start at the base in the middle of my eye and I work my way out to the sides. Soft glam is not a soft glam if you do not go back in and smoke out the bottom. So I'm using the first two shades that I used at the beginning of my look to smoke out this eye. I don't want anything too heavy or too dark on the under eye. So I'm going to use a brown to smoke it out. To finish off this look, I'm going to set my under eye using the Kat Von D Lock It Foundation Powder. And I'm just going to sweep off any of that setting powder that was on my eyes. And I'm just going to set this look. To add more emphasis on the eyes, I'm going to use the Tint Lash and Brow Duo Mascara Wand to just add more volume. And now y'all, my favorite part of this look is the lip gloss. I'm using the Mary Kay Lip Gloss in Soft Nude and I'm going to use the St. Luke's Lip Liner in Secret Admire to line my lips.
This is what makes it a soft glam when you add that Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter in the shade Mean Money to the look. So the highlighter is what brings that softness to this look. You saw before it was kind of like matte. So like adding that highlight is what changes the game for this look. And so it really just makes everything pop. It gives you a glow and that's what we want. I had to give myself a self check just to make sure everything is looking right in it. it is y'all see that glow? Like I don't want nothing too popping, but this right here is just that soft natural radiant glow. To top off this entire look, you know we got it set, so we're using the Maven Rose Water Setting Spray to finish this off. And let's just go ahead and just get into this. Like, it's not too much, it's just right. Like, this, that's what I go for when I do a soft glam, honey. Like, ooh, check out the brown suit. <laughs> sophisticated luxury lifestyle we ready for a business meeting whatever like she is ready y'all i am feeling this look once again the shoulder pads is it for me like i love a good suit i'm gonna try to take a picture just to see like how this look came out like if there's no photo flashback because that's if you if it's flashback then you ain't doing nothing so let me see how, how it look with a picture let's see Oh y'all, yes, yes sis, look at this y'all. Period, hey like, I'm feeling this y'all. I'm ready for a business meeting <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. Cause honey, like this is it. I'm feeling this. If you're feeling this too, put that in the comments below. Give me those thumbs up. Let me know what you think. If you have not, go ahead and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all of my content. I need as many subscribers as I can this year. I'm trying to reach a thousand, so help me reach that goal. It's your girl, Makeup Deanna, and I'll catch you on the next tutorial.